thanks to everybody that came out. The whole concept of this is because of the rash of murders and violent crimes throughout the city of St. Louis. Uh, we were inspired to try to do something other than First of all, I just want to say thank you guys for coming here. This is an honor to be amongst you. You know, I had the pleasure of working with Mr. Muhammad Kamal, his lovely wife. And I lived in North City all my life. We continue to have the same narrative, uh, more police, more incarceration makes our city safe. I've seen the devastation of destruction of what violent crime and disinvestment can do to a community. It's a war zone. Somebody got to save them kids. You got mamas getting shot. A judge sentencing anyone, they ask them about these broken systems. These people need some healing around here. Then we never do anything about it. And so that propelled me into public service. St. Louis needs to be reformed for real. I'm Kim Gardner, circuit attorney for the city of St. Louis. We begin at four with the stunning political upsets. Wesley Bell's defeat of seven-term St. Louis County Prosecutor Bob McCullough. Marilyn Mosby was declared the winner. Larry Krasner obliterated the field. Kim Gardner is the winner of that race. Part of a new wave who pledged to make the justice system more fair to people of color. who are closest to the problem are closest to the solution. All right. How many years has he served? 20. It literally is flipping the role of a prosecutor on its head. So we gotta, gotta take it block by block, street by street. What we have seen traditionally, our prosecutors, they run on these very punitive platforms. Increasingly, as we're learning that the system is not working, and we're seeing prosecutors now run on ending mass incarceration, on addressing racial disparities, on being more transparent and accountable. At what point did you decide to run for district attorney? I was really tired of turning the TV on and seeing an incident involving law enforcement where overwhelmingly black male comes in contact with overwhelmingly white male officer and people were losing their lives. That does not necessarily mean one is right and one is wrong, but there was just too much of a pattern. I just one day said, I'm going to stop yelling at my television and I'm going to change the system from inside. This is kind of my premise about we're going to focus a little bit less of our resources on 15 categories of nonviolent crimes that overwhelmingly the people that are involved in this have a substance use disorder, mental health issue, food or housing insecurity, or are homeless. What we found was, ultimately, we were spending the DA's office a lot of time on these societal problems, and we were using jail as the remedy for every single problem. And I just said I didn't want to do that any longer. Let's try to get everyone inside so we can get started right at four. I want to acknowledge um, out loud that change is really hard. I am fully aware that I uh, can be intense at times and demand excellence. I say this because the people of Suffolk County deserve it. Would you say it is your job to remake a system that has been historically unjust? I would say the system is working exactly the way it was set up to work. Wealth is the biggest thing that benefits you in the system, irrespective of race, gender, national origin, anything. If you can pay you get a better outcome. Let's let everyone have the same experience in the criminal justice system. What makes them powerful, what makes what they do so critically important is that they are disruptors. They're coming in making changes and trying to make it be something different than what it is today and to have a different impact on their communities that it has traditionally had. There's another development that is demoralizing to us in law enforcement and dangerous to the public safety. That is the emergence in some of our large cities 
of district attorneys that style themselves social justice reformers. These cities are headed back to the days of the revolving door justice, and the results are going to be predictable. More crime and more victims. If there's going to be change in, in the way we do policing, the way we do prosecution, what's legal and what's not, then there is a body that does that. It is state legislatures, it is Congress, it is city councils, uh, and maybe that's the office they should have run for. But when they ran for that office, what they agreed to do was to enforce the laws of the United States of America, a state they live in, and a city of which they live. What seems to be lost in this whole thing is in each one of these instances where prosecutors are deciding that they're not going to prosecute crimes, I ask you, who's taking care of the victims there? Who's, who's speaking up for the victims? <laughs> This is not uncontroversial. I mean, the National Police Association filed a grievance against you, essentially calling you soft on crime. How do you respond to people who don't agree with what you're doing? Change is never easy, but for the people that are not happy with what we're doing, they are deeply invested in the system working exactly the way that it does. We are tough on crime, but we're smart on crime. You have the ability to take someone's life and liberty. You know, you have to be credible and trustworthy. We make sure that individuals that are under any type of investigation will not bring any type of charges to our office for review. We have to look at how we as law enforcement, I'm including in that, can build trust, heal the divide with the community. I believe it's my duty to protect the people, to make sure reform is implemented in the city of St. Louis fairly and justly for everyone. Make no mistake, this is the last act of a desperate woman who is simply trying to silence her critics. Embrace the discomfort. After all, change never happens when we're comfortable. And we should never accept, accept a system that prefers finality over justice. Every prosecutor here has had similar experiences to Kim. Yes, we stand man. with Kim. We stand, we stand with, Kim. with Kim. I call them my sisters. And this, this uh, period of progressive reform, African-American female prosecutors, we have unprecedented attacks that we all face. People will go out their way to um, demonize us. People will go out their way to actually want to cause us physical harm. Prosecutors, particularly the elected prosecutors, are often seen as the lead law enforcement officer. And so for that power to not be in the hands of white men, where it has traditionally been, a lot of this has to do with the fact that this power has now shifted to someone who does not look like you know, the traditional power holders who bring a different viewpoint and a different understanding and then aren't just bringing that but are willing to act on it. What does the case say? Uh, so, you know, this is about the uh, 1999 uh, shooting of Charles Taylor. There are two people who have been convicted, Keon Sprinkle and Clarence Williams. The motive apparently was that Williams was having an affair with the victim's wife, and he hooked in his nephew, Keon Sprinkle, to participate in the murder. One of the witnesses who saw, who testified that he saw Keon Sprinkle with a gun said ultimately that he was coerced into testifying. How many years has he served? 20. There's no profession where you get it right every single time. It just doesn't happen. That's why pilots have checklists. 
prosecutors absolutely must be willing to look back at cases and say, did we actually get this right? All right. There was a motion for a new trial. Uh, I allowed that motion. I set uh, today's date so the Commonwealth had a chance to review it. Thank you, Your Honor. Mark Zanini on behalf of the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth has reviewed that, and the Commonwealth does not intend to appeal. It has been a long time coming because this conviction occurred almost 20 years ago, but I will say that it wasn't because of a lack of effort. Nobody can give you back uh, those lost years, uh, but I do hope you'll make the most of the years before you. If we're going to call it a movement, what would you say the movement is about? The movement is about giving a voice. It's not that our communities are uninterested. They've been yelling and nobody's listening. <laughs> when you invest in people, that's how you heal communities. When you invest in more programs to address the hopelessness that we see, that's the long-term violent crime solution. That's doing the hard work. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.